So in late 2018, Google announced that it was creating Google Site Kit for WordPress. So what this plugin does is that it brings in a bunch of different services of Google directly into your dashboard. So instead of having a bunch of tabs open, you can just look at your dashboard in WordPress and see things like analytics, AdSense, Search Console, and even though right now it's in beta, it still works pretty well. Well, I'm Michael with Friday Sanctuary, and today we're going to take a look at Google Site Kit and what it can do for your WordPress blog. Now before we get started, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. And for any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always contact me on Twitter and Facebook, on social media, or you can use the contact form on ridersanctuary.com. I try to reply to those emails as soon as they come in. So with Google Site Kit, you connect all your different services directly to WordPress. And it's a fairly easy process. So let's take a look at Site Kit and see what it does. Okay, so first of all, we are looking at michaelbrockbank.com. Now this is my personal branded website. I just created it um, not too long ago. I've only got like seven posts on it, so it's not right huge or anything and I don't get a lot of traffic to it so but from the directly from the dashboard if I scroll down I can see that um, we got the site kit information here so we got this is all taken from analytics 42 unique visits 37 impressions one total click and two minutes 44 seconds on page time now, this is an average of 28 days and like I said this is a pretty new website so I'm not expecting a ton of traffic which is why I haven't monetized it besides I think it still falls under the threshold for AdSense but you get your basic information of the 28 days. So you've got 27 people have actually seen the home page. You got 18 that goes to uh, the blog post I wrote about losing my son. Um, nine for the welcome page, which was the original home page, but I changed it. And eight and seven. So you get the top five of your most popular pages of the last month. And if we go back up here, we can see site kit on the left. And from here, we can just go to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, you can get a site overview, which is kind of basic information regarding all the different services you have connected. So like organic search terms, referral traffic from things like Twitter and Facebook, direct traffic. We search down and see the search funnels, um, 37 impressions, one click, 42 visitors. It's, uh, it'll tell you which source it comes from, search console or analytics. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see the popularity comes from search, um, AM Green Geeks, um, my name comes up then your most popular content gives you the top pages that people view this is from analytics this is from search console and anytime you want to open up these directly you just hit the link and it'll open up under a new window but one of the cooler features of site kit is if you scroll down a bit more you can get page speed insights now once you first load it up inside of the day it will scan automatically your home page so you can see that my for mobile i'm scoring a 94 and desktop i'm scoring a 99. now if you want even further details on the site speed you just hit this link here and it opens up an whole new window at which point it'll scan through your main domain name and provide even more details as to what affects your load time so like server response remove unused css i still have a few optimization things i want to do to the website but for now that's what it is and if you want to search specific parts of your website, so like posts or pages, you can just title or URL. Now, unfortunately, at this moment, the URL function doesn't work right in Google Site Kit, but also keep in mind that it's also beta. So if you wanted to do a title, let's say we wanted to do my last one that I wrote, and then hit View Data, it'll load up a detailed page stats. And it'll show you the impressions, clicks, unique visitors, bounce rate, all the traffic that you have going, top queries if anything came up. So it does give you a chance to break down specific information about um, posts and pages. What I like is that it's able to scan through all the different titles of your blog. Like if you typed in anything, you got all these different posts that you created. You just click on any one of those and view, view data, and you'll be able to see that it's detail statistics now it doesn't go nearly into detail as something like analytics if you were to drill down the content but it does give you a good idea as to the performance of your blog so if we go to search console you see search console has our total clicks impressions click the average click-through rate and the uh, average position of our blog posts we can scroll down and see all of our search queries now this list will go grow as long as you keep but adding content to it but as you can see it's uh, I haven't really got that much on it so 
That's still kind of nice to know. And if you want to find more information on Search Console, just hit this link here, and it'll bring up a far more detailed breakdown of all of the content you have created. Then you have your analytics here. If you click on that, from here you can see all the different information, such as users, sessions, bounce rate, session duration. It'll show you the trend graph, previous month versus this month. It'll show you all of your most popular pieces of content. And then the breakdown that you have in your uh, dashboard. And if you wanted to add more, you just go to settings. And as you can see from here, I've got Search Console, Analytics, and PageSpeed Insights attached. Then click on connect more services and then if you wanted to add AdSense, optimize and tag manager, all you'd have to do is hit the link to set it up and it would connect to it. But unfortunately I don't have AdSense hooked up to this website because it's not monetized so I can't really show you the breakdown of that. But for what it offers, SiteKit does offer quite a bit of information. It just doesn't go into the really strict deep details that you can go through if you use the actual tool. But if you're a new blogger, it breaks down all the information you need to create a content strategy to find something that works for your audience. One thing I do like about it is that it'll show how much AdSense revenue each blog post generates, and then you can create a strategy on to what would you create to make the most money. So like if you created a blog post that brought in $10 one month and some of the other ones only bring in like a few cents, then you know to double down on certain types of content. So that part of it's pretty cool too. So essentially it brings in all the basic services and capabilities of all of Google's tools directly into WordPress. Now this is a beta so I'm not really sure how far it's going to go but what I've seen so far it looks pretty interesting and I'm kind of excited about it and I can't wait to see what else they add to it. In fact they've already added quite a bit to it since I installed it. I installed this like several months ago and uh, it's gone through quite a few changes and they've added quite a bit to it so I'm really uh, keeping my fingers crossed on it. Now the bad thing about SiteKit is that it's not in the WordPress repository. So if you want to install it, you have to do it manually. Now to install it manually, you just have to go to Plugins, click on Add New, go to Upload Plugin, you choose the file, and then hit Install Now. WordPress will do the rest. Of course, once it's activated, you'll have to connect all your services to it. And even though it's a manual install, you can still do automatic updates by going into WordPress and you get that little icon in the red that says that you have an update available. You just click that, hit update the plugin, and WordPress does the rest. So you don't have to re-upload new updates anytime something new is published, which is kind of convenient. But if you're interested in installing Google Site Kit for yourself, I'll leave a link to the file in the description down below, and there's instructions there, and it's a fairly easy install, straightforward. The hardest part is getting your API key from Google and entering it into WordPress, which really doesn't take much. I installed SiteKit in less than five minutes. It was a pretty quick click, click, upload, and you're done. So what's your favorite analytical software in WordPress? Leave in the comments down below. Right now, I use the Google Analytics for WordPress dashboard, and I'm starting to lean more towards using SiteKit because there's more features that are coming up. And I like to see where I stand in terms of AdSense, Analytics, and Search Console. And since each one of those already has the link installed, all you have to do is just click the link and it opens up that tool. And you can get even further details if you want. So it's a great place to start. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to learn more about blogging, WordPress, freelance writing, textbook, or anything else that I cover, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you tomorrow.